<laughs> and an article in the New York Times explores how smartphones are bad for our posture and our mood. Amy Cuddy argues that hunching over devices leads to physical and psychological problems. Right now, it is the Times' most emailed story, and her 2012 TED Talk is among the most watched with nearly 30 million views. Cuddy explains how posture can affect some of the basic and the biggest moments of our lives. The social scientists have spent a lot of time looking at the effects of, of our body language or other people's body language on judgments. And we make sweeping judgments and inf inferences from body language. And those judgments can predict really meaningful life outcomes like who we hire or promote, um, who we ask out on a date. The Harvard professor and researcher coined the term power pose. She says privately, standing like Wonder Woman for just two minutes before a big challenge can provide a surge of confidence. Amy Cuddy's new book is called Presence, bringing your boldest self to your biggest challenges. Welcome. Thank you. So the idea here is the body leads the mind. It, absolutely. And so the, the body is like the mind's easy button. Mm -hmm. uh, what we do with our body uh, shapes what we do with our mind, but we forget about that because we're stuck in our heads all the time. How does posture influence our behavior? Uh, so posture makes us more assertive if we open up and expand and take up space because that's what we do when we feel powerful and dominant. Mm -hmm. And so if, if we tell our, ourselves that we feel that way by expanding, uh, it makes us more assertive. It makes us more open to challenges. We see them as opportunities instead of threats. We approach instead of avoid. Uh, we perform our best. Mm -hmm. You know, many people always say, Amy, fake it until you make it. You say, fake it until you become it. Yeah. What's the difference between the two for you? Well, I think of faking it until you make it as uh, tricking other people into believing that you're something that you're not. Fake it till you become it means you fool yourself into being your best self. So you trick yourself into feeling confident enough to bring forth your best self. Yeah, and you give examples of people before they go into a big presentation. They go in the mirror and they yeah. do what? Uh, they, they say what and they do what? Uh, well, there are a couple of things you can do. I mean, I, I would say uh, expand, you know, stand like Wonder Woman, stand like a starfish, uh, make yourself as big as you can in private yes. before you walk into these situations. And that will basically optimize your brain to deal well in a really challenging situation. Another thing that you can do, my colleague Allison Woodbrooks has research showing this, you can say instead of, I'm anxious, you say, I'm excited. You can't say, I'm calm, when you're already on a high arousal uh, mm -hmm. mode, but you can tell yourself that you're excited. And there's science and research behind this. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You talk about, too, being imposters, that many people will come to you and say, you know, I'm very successful, because you say being accomplished doesn't take away the imposter feeling, including you. You tell a story about you felt like you were an imposter. Yeah, I said, well, uh, I mean, I, well, I felt like an imposter many times. Uh, uh, you know, I had a really serious head injury, and I, I, I never wanted to be found out. Um, and, uh, you know, I was sure that if I was, uh, people would say, I'll, you know, we're taking these credentials away. Uh, but my, my son said to me one day, you're the luckiest person in the world. And I said, why? And he said, because you're, you get paid to do what you love doing. You, you study people, and you try to make the world better. And I thought when he said that, uh-oh, I'm going to be found out. Someone's going to take this job away. This is too good to be true. Mm -hmm. But the imposter syndrome that you talk about, you spend a lot of time in this book, that's not something just that you have experienced. Sheryl Sandberg writes about it. Meryl Streep writes about it. Don so Cheadle cool. has written about it. The idea that they're not really supposed to be where they are. Yeah. What is the basis of that? Is it a lack of confidence? What is it? I think the basis is that we're in our heads with these doubts, mm -hmm. and we don't realize that other people are also in their heads with these doubts. Mm -hmm. So we look around at everybody else and we think they're fine and I'm not fine so there's obviously something wrong here I'm an imposter but they yeah, actually I mean, it, it's belong that old here. notion someday they can discover me that's exactly right that's exactly now let's right. talk about how you're sitting right now at yeah. this moment and, yes. and what you thought about before you came out here <laughs> um, uh, yeah I thought about w wanting to sort of open myself up uh, but, not... you're, but you're sitting back yes. you're sitting back in the chair yeah your knees are mm -hmm. yeah I think I think crossed. legs crossed are fine. You mean yeah. women cross their legs? I think that's fine. When women do this thing that I call twisty legs, where they also wrap their ankles, mm -hmm. that's no good. Uh, I'm trying to keep my elbows on the arms of the chair because that keeps me open. Instead of doing something yeah. like this, this is super powerless. Mm -hmm. This is super powerless. Anytime we're wrapping ourselves up, touching our necks or yeah, our faces, when somebody's rubbing their neck. You go, okay, they're they're, they're in the really one down really nervous. Position. Like mm -hmm. as soon as you see that happening, you know that somebody's feeling powerless or nervous. You talk about, about the gender differences. Mm -hmm. I thought this was fascinating with yeah. little kids, little yes. boys and little girls, just 
see men as more powerful. Talk about that. Yeah, well, we did a series of studies with four-year-olds and six-year-olds. We showed them pictures of dolls that were gender neutral, but that were in expansive postures like this or contractive postures like this. Even by age four, the kids thought that these dolls were boys mm -hmm. and these dolls were girls. By age six, the effect was even stronger. So kids are learning those cultural stereotypes very, very early. I like your, your picture of the power pose. Why is that a power pose? Uh, well, it's so... This is Nora at her death. <laughs> Why is that the power pose? So it's, it's so expansive. I mean, you, so the, the, it, it's not a position that you would normally adopt. But when, if you look at pictures of presidents, yes. they're often in that position in the Oval Office. They've got their feet on their desk yeah. and the hands behind the heads. Have you noticed the way Donald Trump speaks? It's always like this. He's always gesturing like that. There is a lot of gesturing from, from Donald Trump. It also seems not super controlled, so uh, that takes away from the the, the uh, sort of so you analyze the, the get gestures of presidential candidates oh well that's always a slippery slippery slope, slope. <laughs> no one's ever happy when I do that yeah. but talk about you said something as we were talking earlier you said something sometimes your presence is more important than what you say in a presentation yeah. and that's really interesting to think about so if someone is giving a presentation or going in for an interview what are the things they should do well I mean so I, what, what you need to do is believe your story before you go in. And the funny thing is that we might believe our story, but we get to the door and we're filled with self-doubt, and all of a sudden we no longer believe it, and that comes through. No one else is going to believe your story if you don't believe your story. Uh, that is really the key. That's the, the manifestation of presence, is going in and just showing people who you actually are. Mm -hmm. So it, even if it's awkward and kind of strange, mm -hmm. who you are is better than something that seems scripted and choreographed. Right. that you don't believe. Authenticity. Right. Exactly. I so believe that. Yeah. And exactly. the name of your book is what? It's called <laughs> Presence. Oh, Presence. There you go. Well, thank you. There's so much good stuff in this book. Thank you so much for having me. Good yeah, job. We really thank appreciate you. it. And Presence goes on sale next Tuesday, December 22nd. That's the power pose, Charlie. That's good. Yeah.